What do you think makes for the best Thanksgiving host? Is it having a big house, being a great cook, being just overall hospitable, or something else entirely? Hello everybody, I'm Lavis, and the SCP I'm going to tell you about today is SCP-5031, yet another murder monster. Let's begin. Note, file under review. This document has been flagged for possible methodological issues. Please be aware that the following information is subject to change and may contain inaccuracies. Item Number SCP-5031 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-5031 is to be contained in an airtight iron cell in Biosite 59. The structure must be inspected for imperfections on a bi-weekly basis. No other interaction is necessary. Description SCP-5031 is a non-sapient quasi-humanoid creature of unknown origin. When directly observed, SCP-5031 will temporarily cease to exist until the viewer stops observing the space that SCP-5031 formerly occupied. Traces of its existence, for example scratch marks or blood trails, continue to exist when SCP-5031 does not. Video and photography devices do not capture SCP-5031's appearance. However, observing SCP-5031's shadow does not cause cessation of existence allowing certain physiological traits to be inferred from its silhouette. Abnormally small head with no discernible neck. Elbows branch into three sets of lower arms each. Elongated torso approximately 1.9 meters in length, presumably for extra digestive capacity. Pelvis terminates in a crescent-shaped protrusion of osseous tissue with a blade-like lower edge. Levitates above the ground at a fixed height of 0.5 meters. While SCP-5031 has no nutritional needs, it will nevertheless hunt and consume any human or animal it encounters by using its pendulous lower body to down targets. SCP-5031 does not sleep and is incapable of expression or verbal communication. Addendum As of February 14th, 2018, Senior Researcher Stanley Huxtable is now acting in the role of HMCL Supervisor for SCP-5031. The following is a selection of relevant correspondences from SR Huxtable to Site Director Yusuf Mustafi elucidating research progress. February 14, 2018 Initial Impressions I have no idea who wrote this, but there's a lot I'd like to say to them. I'm not a fan of abandoning a living creature inside a metal box for 10 years, no matter how pragmatic it may be. It's difficult to fathom that such things were considered the norm a decade ago. Have you ever heard something scream from behind 10 inches of iron for hours on end? When I do my redraft, remind me to add anomalous resistance to hoarseness somewhere in the description. Could you work your magic and get the boys to retrofit the containment cube with an aperture and security vestibule? I'd like to run some tests that require exposing SCP-5031 to certain stimuli. March 8, 2018 Round 1 Tests Sound Summary Forward. Installed speakers in the containment vestibule and played various albums of natural ambience and popular music. SCP-5031's propensity for screaming worked as a convenient way to measure its stress levels. 100% would be considered its typical screaming, volume and duration over 48 hours, and 0% would be no screaming at all. Morning Forest Ambience. Stress level 43%. Seaside Paradise Ambience, stress level 48%. Deep Grotto Ambience, stress level 62%. The Best of Mozart, stress level 13%. The Best of Enya, stress level 18%. The Best of Ben Folds, stress level 6%. The Best of Jethro Tull, stress level 59%. And The Best of Kiss, stress level 23%. Afterward, Efficacy of music for stress reduction gradually decreases over time. I've assembled a playlist of SCP-5031's favorite music to play on shuffle in its enclosure in perpetuity. Stress levels consistently remain in the 15% to 25% range. Baseline adjusted accordingly. March 22, 2018 Round 2 Tests Play Summary Test Threw softball into enclosure. Result SCP-5031 sliced the ball in two. Tossed basketball into enclosure. Result, SCP-5031 sliced the ball open. 
rolled bowling ball into enclosure. Result, SCP-5031 scratched a couple of grooves into the ball, then rolled the ball around the enclosure with the blunt end of its tail for 20 minutes. Stress levels remained below 60% after play. Rolled another bowling ball into enclosure. SCP-5031 used the blunt end of its tail to hit the balls together for a while. Stress levels remained lower than 40% after play. Bowling ball chipped and would no longer roll properly, which was unplanned. Result, stress levels increased to 115%. Replacement bowling ball provided. Result, stress levels fell back to about 40%. Tossed basketball into enclosure. Result, SCP-5031 picked up and played with the ball. Stress levels remained below 20% after play. Afterward, SCP-5031 began to use its hands to play with the basketball, possibly to avoid accidentally damaging it. Motor skill comparable to that of a toddler. SCP-5031 still prefers bowling ball for kicking. April 5th, 2018. Round 3 Tests, Food. Summary. Forward. SCP-5031 was given the choice between two potential food sources placed at opposite ends of the enclosure. Choices, human corpse and pig carcass. Selection, pig carcass. Choices, pig carcass and chicken carcass. Selection, pig carcass. Choices, pig carcass and rotisserie chicken. Selection, rotisserie chicken. Choices, chicken carcass and rotisserie chicken. Selection, rotisserie chicken again. Choices, live chicken and rotisserie chicken. And selection, rotisserie chicken once again. Choices, roasted turkey and rotisserie chicken. Selection, neither, presumably because the entity is sated. Afterward, while it's true that SCP-5031 doesn't necessarily need to eat, feeding it regularly has caused a marked decrease in the average stress levels. Stress reduction seems to scale proportionally with the quality of food provided. Also of note is that SCP-5031 prefers to use its tail to pry and cut meat into bite-sized portions, rather than rip the meat into chunks with its teeth or hands. April 12th, 2018. Round 4 Tests. Coexistence. Summary. Test 1. SCP-5031 fed until sated. Live subject, a common chicken, introduced into the enclosure. Result, SCP-5031 observed subject from a distance for several minutes, and then rolled a bowling ball towards subject at a high speed. Subject was killed instantly. SCP-5031's stress levels rose immediately and drastically. Test 2. Bowling balls removed from enclosure. SCP-5031 fed until sated. Live subject, common chicken, introduced to enclosure. Result, SCP-5031 gently rolled a basketball towards subject. Ball hit subject lightly. Subject responded with a small cry and moved away. SCP-5031 did not engage with subject any further. Test 3. SCP-5031 fed until sated. Live subject, a Class D, blindfolded, introduced to enclosure, and instructed to sit and roll basketball forward, then wait until it came back and roll it away again. Result, subject and SCP-5031 successfully rolled the ball back and forth for several minutes. SCP-5031 eventually abandoned the activity and approached subject. Per safety protocol, subject removed their blindfold to terminate the activity. Test 4, SCP-5031 fed until sated. Live Class D subject introduced to the enclosure and instructed to toss a tennis ball at the wall, let it ricochet behind them, then catch and repeat. Result, SCP-5031 stood behind subject and successfully engaged in the game of catch, mimicking subject's action of letting ball ricochet against the wall. Afterward, SCP-5031's motor skills appear to be rapidly improving. May 16th, 2018. Round 5 Tests, Symbols. Summary. Forward, five LCD displays were fitted into the wall of SCP-5031's enclosure each with a lit button and a food dispenser underneath. Test 1. Two stations activated. Screen 1 displayed the image of a rock. Its button dispensed rocks. Screen 2 displayed the image of a rotisserie chicken. Its button dispensed pieces of chicken. Result, SCP-5031 poked at the image of a chicken for a few minutes and eventually hit the button. 
Chicken was dispensed until SCP-5031 was satisfied. Test 2. Screen displays and the materials dispensed were swapped. Result: SCP-5031 hit the button it had hit the previous day and received a rock. It then went to the other screen and hit the button to dispense chicken. Test 3. Screen displays and materials dispensed were swapped back to their original positions and set to swap again at random intervals after first distribution. Result, SCP-5031 went directly to the button next to the image of a chicken. Experienced apparent confusion after the first mid-distribution swap, but quickly learned to watch the images. Test 4. Three more stations, with screens, buttons, and dispensers were activated. Four stations displayed the word rock and dispensed rocks. One station displayed the word chicken and dispensed chicken. Arrangement set to change randomly several times over the following days. Result? Through trial and error, SCP-5031 determined which stations dispensed chicken. SCP-5031 subsequently went to the station marked chicken whenever displays were swapped. Test 5. All stations deactivated except one. Screen displayed the word chicken. Several wood blocks were set in front of the station, each marked with one of the letters of the word chicken. The station's button was set to remain unlit and inactive until the blocks were arranged in the correct order. Result? SCP-5031 expressed apparent frustration, hitting the inactive button repeatedly and striking the wall with its tail. Test 6. Same as previous test, but screen displayed the word chicken with each letter overlaid on a photo of a wood block. Result? After 12 minutes, SCP-5031 successfully assembled the word chicken. Afterward, it can learn language, Yusuf. August 29, 2018. Round 6 tests. Vocabulary. Results. Forward, SCP-5031 has learned to use letter blocks to form the following words. For foods, it can spell chicken, turkey, pork, tofu, beef, bread, more salt, more pepper, and more cooked. For music, it can spell Mozart, Enya, Ben Folds, Forest, Seaside, White Noise, More Volume, Less Volume, and Silence. And for play, it can spell Basketball, Bowling Ball, Tennis Ball, Cat, Dog, Human, Robert, Stanley, and Alone. Note, the D-Class personnel it commonly interacts with is named Robert Stanley. Afterward, through its increased vocabulary and human interaction, SCP-5031 has made the following progress. Established food preferences and dish pairings. Learned to sing non-verbally. Learned to juggle. Six-handed juggling is something to behold. October 5th, 2018. Round 7 Tests. Activities. Summary. Test 1. Introduced table, paper, and crayons into the enclosure. Live subject Robert Stanley, or D-52125, instructed to demonstrate drawing for SCP-5031. Result, SCP-5031 learned to draw. Discernible subjects depicted in this artwork include D-52125, SCP-5031, a rotisserie chicken, a cat, and myself. Test 2. Introduced piano into the enclosure. Live subject D-52125 instructed to play chopsticks blindfolded and invite SCP-5031 to play along. Subject had time to practice beforehand. Result, SCP-5031 learned chopsticks in two days, though it appeared more interested in making its own original music complete with vocals. These compositions might be considered crude by human standards. Test 3. Introduced Spice Rack into the Enclosure. Live subject D-52125 instructed to demonstrate seasoning meats. Result, SCP-5031 spent almost three days straight experimenting with different combinations of foods and spices. SCP-5031 assembled the words more, more, more with its letter blocks after running out of garlic powder. Afterward, SCP-5031 only engages with art and music when accompanied by D-52125 but it continues to be preoccupied with food preparation even when alone. January 4th, 2019. Round 8 Tests. Cooking. Results. Forward. 
Basic kitchen utensils installed in enclosure. Sharp implements withheld per security protocol. SCP-5031 used its tail to cut food. Live subject D-52125 instructed to demonstrate preparation of various recipes. Recipes learned, quesadilla, taco, hamburger, fried rice, Mongolian beef, spicy chicken curry, chocolate chip cookies, sponge cake with buttercream, fudge, clam chowder, steak, macaroons, chicken adobo, smoked salmon, and profiteroles. Afterward, SCP-5031 has a severe peanut allergy. This should be included in revised containment procedures. I would also like to note that SCP-5031 is now a better chef than the average human, and it has begun to create its own recipes. D-52125 has volunteered to taste test. June 30th, 2019. Update. SCP-5031 has said its first word. Salt. We are all immensely proud. November 29th, 2019. Final test. Summary. SCP-5031 was given two months to develop a three-course meal to serve at the Biosite 59 cafeteria for personnel working over Thanksgiving. Its selections were as follows. First course, sweet potato turmeric miso soup. Second course, duck confit with apple cider glaze and cranberry compote topping, paired with butternut squash gnocchi on a bed of kale seasoned with truffle salt. Third course, a slice of spiced cassava pie topped with French vanilla ice cream and a maple hazelnut syrup. SCP-5031 also debuted its original composition, Piano Sonata for Six Hands, in a live performance broadcast from its enclosure. Personnel response was overwhelmingly positive. SCP-5031 stress levels at 0%. Testing successfully concluded, revised documentation submitted for approval. Thank you very much for listening. If you like what you heard and want to hear more, you could click over here for another video I made, or you could click over here to subscribe. And if you have any other SCP ideas that you want to hear me read, please leave them in the comments below. Have a nice day.